What's up, everybody? Good afternoon. Let's talk Seahawks. Specifically, let's talk the defense, or at least what we're being told the defense might be in 2022. So, obviously, a lot of the excitement around this team right now is centered around the defense because we got a new defensive coordinator, brought in Sean Desai, Seems like the team might be trending in a good direction here. And Clint Hurt, in particular, the new defensive coordinator, has said a lot of exciting and interesting things since he got on board. Uh, I think he won a lot of fans with that press conference right after he officially got the position. So I want to talk about one specific thing that he said, and I want to talk about the ramifications of it, because... Um, one thing that he said specifically in that press conference was that we were going to use more 3-4 defense. He implied that the Seahawks defense in 2022 is going to be a hybrid defense. A defense that shifts back and forth between being a 4-3, which we're used to under Carroll, and a 3-4, which I think is actually a pretty good way of getting the most out of some of these players. So this is not something that I dread at all. In fact, I think it's on many levels a good idea. And some people have said correctly that the Seahawks defense already started to adopt some 3-4 principles last year as the season went on, which is why you saw so many defensive linemen dropping back into coverage. And that's true too. However, I want to take a look at this from a more in-depth perspective so we understand what it's going to take and what we're going to need in order to really have this 3-4 working because last year when we were running those 3-4 type concepts where you would have basically three guys rushing the passer and then you would have a fourth uh, defensive lineman drop back into coverage a lot I felt like a lot of that was just kind of doing it because that was the guy who was out there at the time, and they needed them to do that. Never mind the fact of whether or not that player was good at it. Never mind the fact that whether or not the offense would be intimidated by it. They just did it to do it. That's why you saw Carlos Dunlap drop back into coverage. Like, I think the the official number was like 12.5% of his snaps last year. And I, I just don't think that's very productive. So in this video, I want to talk about the 3-4 defense and I want to talk about some of the things we may have to reconsider this offseason if we're truly going to try to make this hybrid work. Because there are a few players on this team who I don't know where they're left if we do run this 3-4. So, breaking down some of these positions first, I want to talk about the nose tackle. That's this guy right here. Um, right in the middle here, I just realized you guys cannot see my mouse. Uh, shoot. Okay. There we go. Okay, that's better. Okay, so right here, the nose tackle. So, the nose tackle in a 3-4 is kind of like the one tech in a 4-3, but it's a little more extreme. Um, you, you Most nose tackles, I, there are a couple exceptions. Like, I, off the top of my head, Jay Ratliff on the Cowboys several years ago. For the most part, nose tackles are big. They're like 330 pounds or more. They're space eaters. They're trying to occupy as many blockers as they can. They're trying to get double teamed. They're trying to get triple teamed. When, when people think about 3-4 nose tackles, they generally think about guys like Casey Hampton and Vince Wilfork. Just, just big dudes who could absorb a lot of attention. So, Puna Ford is a great one tech, but I don't think he has what it takes to be a, some people call this a zero tech. Uh, a nose tackle, he's not big enough. So if you want to do this 3-4 thing, if you actually want to run a credible hybrid defense with a true nose tackle, then you might be trying to bring in... Well, first, you might bring back Al Woods because he's actually 330. He can do nose tackle stuff. But if you bring in Al Woods knowing that he's old and knowing that he might not be able to play a full season the way he did last year, you need more. So you might be looking at trying to find another 330 plus guy or drafting one to give Al Woods some backup, make it so Al Woods doesn't have to play 60 snaps a game. At his age, that's probably a very good idea. But 
if you're actually going to commit to running a lot of 3-4, Al Woods goes from a guy I don't want to bring back to a guy you kind of have to bring back. Okay, so the defensive ends in a 3-4 are somewhat similar. There's not a lot of glory to playing defensive end in a 3-4, these two guys. There, there, occasionally you will have a guy like Stefan Tuitt who puts up stats as a 3-4 end, but most of them don't. A lot of them just occupy blockers and eat up space and let the linebackers do what they need to do. So, looking at this roster, the guys who I think could play 3-4 end would be Puna Ford, maybe. I think Kerry Hyder can. Maybe if you keep LJ Collier, he could at least be a warm body there. Maybe if you bring back Robert Kimdichi, he could do it. But other than maybe Puna Ford, it's not exactly a murderer's row. So if you are actually going to be trying to run this 3-4, you might need to bring in some guys with a little more credibility at playing that role in this defense. And I think the biggest thing that people are going to kind of get wrong about this hypothetical hybrid defense is the outside linebacker spots. Because the middle linebackers, it's actually not so bad. Uh, if we decide to run a 3-4 a lot, then you're probably going to basically see Wagner and Brooks play the middle, right? And if you let Wagner go, then maybe it's Barton. But actually, running a lot of 3-4 next year gives us a credible excuse to bring back Bobby on a reduced salary and not have it take away from Brooks's role. So if we decide to go to a lot of 3-4, part of the reason may be to allow Brooks to play in the middle, but not completely get rid of Bobby. So that may be the play here. But the outside linebackers, here's the thing. These guys often are considered interchangeable with like the 4-3 defensive end because they rush the passer a lot. But there's more to playing outside linebacker. You've got to cover more. You've got to drop into space more. You've got to be more deceptive. Um, four three ends typically are just rushing the passer snap after snap or playing the run. Um, but typically they're playing with their hand in the turf all game long. Outside linebackers in a three four, it's a little more nuanced. And I'll say this: I think that Daryl Taylor could do it. I th this hybrid defense might be being designed around. Two guys. One is Jamal Adams, of course, but the other is Daryl Taylor. Because to me, Daryl Taylor is a guy who could really benefit from this. Because I think that Taylor can play defensive end in a 4-3, both sides. I think he can play Sam linebacker in a 4-3. And I think he can play outside linebacker in a 3-4. So you might see Daryl Taylor be the hero of this new defense. Which is one of the reasons why I am supporting it. But after Daryl Taylor... I don't know. You've got um, Benson Mayoa. I think he could play outside linebacker in a 3-4. And he also has some versatility to him as well. He can play end. He can, he's okay at Sam, I guess. I, he can do it and not completely embarrass himself. But Carlos Dunlap kind of left Cincinnati because they were switching to a 3-4. And he, didn't, he, he wasn't good at that. And based off what I saw last year when we were trying to use him in coverage, he's not, that's not his game. So him being a defense, a, an outside linebacker in a 3-4 is kind of wasting him. Alton Robinson, it's too early to say for sure, but I don't think he can do it either. Uh, if, if you bring back Rasheem Green, I don't think he can do it either. So I'm looking at some of these guys and wondering where do they fit in. Some people might say, well, who cares about Alton Robinson? He's a third-year player on a dirt-cheap contract. Didn't do anything last year. Who cares? Maybe so but he's still here. Are you going to trade him? Are you going to cut him? Uh, and, and and Dunlap, he's a veteran. He was playing really well at the end of the year last year. Where does he fit in on this hybrid defense? Because the idea of the hybrid defense is that you can kind of line up the same guys from snap to snap, and the offense doesn't really know what to expect. And in most areas, I think the transition would take, but you've got to hit the... Um, other outside linebacker spot hard. You got to find a guy who can play some 4 3 end and some 3 4 outside. So now we're on the menu for guys like Von Miller, 
for guys like Chandler Jones, maybe Hassan Reddick. Some people really like Hassan Reddick. He, he's definitely interesting, especially if he gets lowballed again for some weird reason. But um, it it changes your priorities a little bit. Now, instead of maybe a clowny, you're actually looking to pay a little bit more for a guy like a Chandler Jones or a Von Miller or Hassan Reddick, who, by the way, Spotrack thinks Hassan Reddick is going to make a mint this offseason. So, again, this is not a bad idea. We, we do have some guys who can make this transition well, I believe. In some regards, we made the transition partially last year, and it, it, it wasn't all bad. Uh, I think Kerry Hyder could be a very capable end in a 3-4 defense. But um, I, I, I'm worried, a little worried about Puna. I, I, I think he can do it, but I got to see it. So I, I just want people to kind of understand that the offseason priorities here have to change a little bit centered around what we're actually going to do on defense because you don't want tells. And if you're going to try to do something where you go, okay, every time Dunlap or Alton is on the field, we're going to be doing a 4-3, then that's the problem. Other offenses are going to figure that out. So either you need to just suck it up for a handful of snaps a game when Dunlap or Alton is out there, potentially they drop back into coverage and you just have to live with the results, or you get rid of those guys, or at the very least bring in other guys who can do those things. So... I just wanted to talk a little bit about that 3-4 transition. It's doable, and I think it could be good, but it increases dramatically the priority of getting a true nose tackle. You might need to add another 3-4 uh, end, and you really need to bring at least one more blue chip outside linebacker pass rusher who can also play with his hand in the dirt as a 4-3 end. All right, let me know what you guys think down below. See you guys later. Go Hawks. Hey, I think this means good things for Daryl Taylor and Jamal Adams, so we've got that.